All right, what's up, everyone? It's Matt Merzik. This will be work in progress number nine. Last night was work in progress number eight, which I'm hoping we'll upload. I'm having problems with it, so hopefully I didn't lose any of the, the video footage. Um, so kind of a lazy day around the house, so I'll be able to work quite a bit on the Batman. So last time I showed you um, how I did the yellow, I sealed that last night with Tester's dull coat, and it's got this kind of nice little leathery look to it. I didn't videotape it, but I just masked off the belt buckle, and I sprayed two colors. The first one was uh, Pale Burnt Metal, from the, the Vallejo Metal Color Series, and then I just went around the edges with um, some, I'm oh, sorry, no, it was uh, Burnt Iron is what I used for the base coat. Uh, I, at first I did Pale Burnt Metal, but it was too bright, so I did Burnt Iron as the base coat, and then I went around the edges with some Gun Metal, just to give it some shading, so got some kind of like shape on there. Um, the artwork is actually pretty bright, but I wanted to tone it down a little bit. So now what I'm going to do, I still have all this masking on here, because I do not want to unmask this before I'm done with the pouches. I'm going to do a light pin wash, and the pin wash is different than an overall wash. So when I did the gray, I did an overall wash. I put the wash on everything, and I just kind of let it flow around, and I kind of manipulated it a little bit. The pin wash is where you go in and very selectively add a filter or, um, you know, oops, that is all caked up. So when you uh, selectively go in and... Sorry, um, I wasn't expecting this to be all dunked up. You selectively go in and add your, your your wash to certain areas. You're not flooding the entire area. You're just doing it, and it's like it's kind of like doing panel lines. So I got this MIG wash right here. Filter. This is uh, this actually this is labeled as brown for white, but I'm gonna use it on this yellow. And I'm gonna mix it up. I need to buy myself a paint mixer because um, these uh, uh, acrylics and these enamels like the pigment likes to settle quite a bit. And I need to get some gloves on because this is an enamel product. I don't want to get sticky fingers and touching everything. So uh, yeah, so this is uh, Mig Brown for White. And we're going just selectively. I'm just going to kind of add a little drops of this around the pouches, like in the crevices and stuff, and let it flow a little bit. I don't want to put on too wet because I don't want it going underneath my tape um, and getting onto all the, the gray surfaces. So I need to have a good supply of, you know, some Q tips close by, maybe some paper towel, which I have right here. Huh. You can see me recording on my phone right here and watching myself. That's the nice thing about this, the, the, yeah, sorry about all the background noise, my kids are watching movies and stuff, and it's, um, it's very loud in the house, but it's okay. So, um, so I got my wash right here, got some Q-tips, got my paper towels, put on some gloves, and we're just going to go in there and um, add a little bit of this to bring out some of the details. And uh, I haven't done any weathering on the kit per se, and what le weathering I will do will be fairly light. It'll be consistently mostly of dry brushing. All right, so we got the brown here. I'm gonna get one of the brushes I was using last night. Again, I'm in full production mode, so my work area is a mess. Just a light brush here, and basically we're just gonna take this and kind of touch it and let it flow around everything like this. Just real light. I chose brown because um, I'm gonna take some of this out. If you get too much, you can go in there, touch it with the brush, and kind of suck it up a little bit. And then just kind of remove it from the top. You get too much. It's so already just those two little. I'm not sure if it's showing up in camera well. On that first pouch, I just did it kind of in the crevices and around that, um, I'm going to call it a buckle, I'm not sure what it is. Just kind of let it flow into the, the details. So this is really isn't um, a fast process because you're just going real slow. Selectively kind of putting this in. But that makes a big difference already. So 
So Mark signed off on the yellow last night, which means I can move on to this step. And once I do this, I'll seal this, and I can take the tape off. And we'll kind of get our first glimpse of what all the colors look like together. It's always kind of a fun moment because as you're working, you really don't know what you got until you're done. So again, just kind of going in here and going in all the crevices, letting it flow. This is real liquidy. This is perfect consistency. We're doing this kind of thing. It just flows real naturally into all the grooves and everything. It's okay that it gets on some of the other areas. We don't want this to be super clean looking. We don't want these pouches looking brand new. We want to look like they've had some wear on them. What I can do is once this kind of dries, I can go in with some lighter fluid and gently clean up any areas where I got some of the, the wash that I don't want it. mainly on some of the raised areas. So I chose the brown because it's a nice complement to the to the yellow. I didn't go with black or anything that have been too contrasty for this. And if it doesn't flow just kind of go in there and kind of paint it in, you know. a big difference and this should dry pretty quick so you can see I'm here just kind of let it flow into the crevices and just painting it in a little areas where it doesn't want to flow maybe my paint is in this It'll flow wherever the paint is really smooth. Sometimes a little rough area, but it's okay. So by the time I'm done with all these videos, I should have about 10 to 12 hours of video footage on this build-up. So um, it should be cool. It's actually it's like actually my really first. Um, well, I guess the help I did a lot of videos, but this one I did a lot more of like what I'm doing kind of thing to show people kind of what what it, what it takes to get one of these done and the steps I go through. And then once I get done with the, the very last thing I'll do before I seal the kit one more time will be like some light dry brushing and stuff. Maybe a little pigment work here and there to give him a little wear. We're not going to make him super dirty. We do want to make it look like he's been, he's seen a little action. I'm going to have to shake this um, wash up here in a second. It's, the pigments have started to settle. So you can see I'm just going in here and I'm not slathering this stuff on like I did when I did the gray. The gray I put it on really kind of loosely. So I wanted that to give it an overall tonal change. I don't want to give this a tonal change. I really like this yellow. I'm just using this to bring out the details. That's why, I'm, that's why they call it a pin wash because you're 
pinpointing where you're putting the wash. I'm going to shake this up real quick. I think some of the pigments have settled. Go back and touch some of these other areas where the wash didn't have a lot of pigment in it. It started to settle. So it's a little messy right now, but I'm going to go in and clean it up when I'm done. Yeah, all the cool pouches are in the back here where you're not even going to see them. Because the cape. Alright. So, with this being an enamel base, I can go in there with them. Um, some lighter fluid and clean up uh, any messy areas and I like lighter fluid over enamel thinner because uh, even though this is lacquer paint uh, enamel thinner sometimes can eat through the lacquer even lighter fluid if you're too aggressive with it eventually you will rub through the paint even though you know they're two different types technically they're not supposed to do that but they do So that's it for adding the pin wash. Note this dry. It'll take a little while. I'll let it sit for maybe 30 minutes or so. If I try to go and start taking it off now, I'll just pull up this, the work I've done. I don't want to do that. Just going back and adding a little bit more. Where it's a little light. This will get it once I clean it up. Did Red show up? Where what? He, he came back. Hmm. Our cat kind of went missing last night. He's out. He's an outdoor cat, but we bring him inside when it's cold out and put him in the garage. But maybe the coyotes got him. Yeah, I find sometimes when I'm doing this kind of thing, I have to go back and do it again because the wash, you know, the wash is so thin. Sometimes you can't even see it. time real quick all right so that's it for there I'll let this dry and I'll come back and I'll clean it up all right so I actually went through and I just hit that with a hair dryer real quick to kind of speed up that drying process I'm gonna get a q-tip have a little lighter fluid in here and you don't want this super super wet you want it just barely damp because you'll just pull up everything so now what I do is I'm gonna go in here just very lightly Wipe over the surfaces and get any kind of messiness cleaned up. And then it'll just leave it in the crevices 
I'm not really putting any pressure on this, just very lightly wiping. Q-tip kind of fell apart on me. It's better if the the fibers are tight. Again, just real light wiping this. I'll probably go in with some pigments and stuff later when I do start doing the weathering process. Give it some more dimension. So that adds just a brings brings out some of those details a little bit better. better. So hopefully you can see that. I'm cleaning that up and that's kind of leaving all that stuff we just did in the re recesses. I guess not perfect, but we don't want it to look perfect. We want it to look natural. Oops, sorry. That's really about it right there. So we clean that up. Leaving that wash in some of those crevices and stuff. That's it. So I'm going to go seal these and uh, we'll take the masking tape off and see what it looks like. Okay, while well, I wait for other things to dry, I'm going to go ahead and start um, working on these plaques a little bit more. I showed in a previous video how I kind of uh, did a, a spray can coating first of um, I got like a bronze um, from testers and then I went back over with a, a just misting some copper over it just to warm it up a little bit. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, basically just do a wash on this to bring out all the details and stuff. And I'm not sure exactly how I'm going to do this yet, so you get to watch me experiment. And my initial thought is I'm going to do a watercolor. Um, and I think I'm going to like, use a black, um, a brown. I'm going to just mix up a really kind of um, dark brown and go from there see what this see how, see how this works. And actually, make it fairly thick. So there's some actually using some Windsor Newton right there that I had bought earlier. Um, that's um, what is this? Burnt umber, a little black to darken it up. And I'm not going to make this too watery. I want this fairly thick because what I'm going to do. Let's see if this works. So I'm just going to add just a little bit of water. Kind of want this like a pasty consistency. So 
So you get to see if this works or not. It's got a really dark brown right now. You can see there. And we'll try it on the Gotham City one first. So this is pretty, pretty thick. And what I'm going to do is I'm just kind of slather it on there. I'm going to fill in everything. So I'm going to cover the whole thing. Get in all the nooks and crannies. We'll see if this works. And this being watercolor, if it doesn't, I can just go rinse it off. And it's already been sealed and everything, so with a, a luster finish. We'll see what this does. So again, people ask me how I do things a lot of times, and uh, to be honest, I have to learn or figure things out and this is kind of this is kind of me figuring stuff out now this being watercolor is already starting to dry I'm going to do all these with this because I think this is going to get what I want the effect I want I have to mix some more up give me a lot I get I'm seeing some spots I didn't get way down in the corners. I'm just making them made up some more right here. A little soupier than the first mix, but that's okay. So means I'll get down the crevices better. So the next step will be pretty messy cleaning this all up. That's all right. We want this to look like it's been out in the weather. It's accumulated. You know, stuff in the corners. And this may take me a couple of tries to get the look I want. I, I want to, now I'm thinking I probably should have gone through and sponged it on a slightly brighter color, just randomly sponged it on. But I think I can get the same effect once I'm done with this with some dry brushing. And this step right here is basically to get grime and stuff in all the recesses and all the corners. And you can see I'm not being too careful about it. I'm just kind of slapping it on there. up some more. And we're going to let this dry pretty much all the way before we do the next step. Right. We don't want it to accumulate, accumulate too much in the corners. We don't want it one so I was trying to upload the video I did last night and I was getting an error and I found out that um, during recording there was a did a little Google search and basically they had a couple of frames that were corrupted so I had to go through and find those few frames and take them out so there's like a little skip in the video so I'm hoping that 
I'm trying to upload it again right now. I'm hoping that uh, what I did works because it's a long video. It's an hour and a half. And every time, I, every time I try to upload it, it takes like half an hour before I get the error message that it didn't upload. Okay. Same thing in here. And this actually has some texture on top. I'm not sure it's supposed to be there, but it is. Alright. So now we've got this lovely mess that I just made. And we're going to... I'll probably hit this with the hairdryer here in a second. I'm going to get some of this out of the corners a little bit. A little thick. Okay. Alright. So I'm going to clean my brush off. Clean off a little bit at least. So once I get this Batman knocked out, I'm going to get back on the bust I've been working on and a Hulk. Got lots of projects going on right now. Hopefully, I'll get through most of them before the end of the year. That's my goal. All right. Just clean out my brush here a little bit. All right. Get my hair dryer. Go ahead and force dry this a little bit. A little too much accumulation in some of these uh, crevices. I'm going to take some of the paint out. I may have made it a little thick. We'll find out. It's a good thing it's watercolor, but I can go in here and just kind of take some of it out. Kitchen towel doesn't matter what you use, I guess. As long as you don't mind it, get, it getting dirty. And I've got my water here. I'm going to put a little bit of water on here, and I don't want it wet, I just want it damp. I just put a very small amount of water here on this on this uh, corner. I'm going to start wiping this off a little bit. Turn your towel quite a bit. And this should leave a nice little accumulation of watercolor and all the details and the corners and stuff. That's the goal, at least. Let's see what happens.
I think this will be a good first step for this. Get this on my finger now. I'm just trying to get kind of in between the letters a little bit. kind of nice because it's actually giving a nice little kind of it's kind of acting as a wash too overall Just and um, add a little more highlight to it. I think this will be a nice look for these. Uh, Mark was wanting kind of like a rubbed bronze weather look. Uh, bronze doesn't rust. Um, he mentioned rust, but bronze doesn't rust. It patinas, kind of like copper does a little bit. It doesn't get green though. It just kind of it, it collects dirt and stuff in the crevices. So what I'm going to do is, this is actually doing pretty good, I'm going to get um, a little stiff brush with a teeny tiny bit of water, I don't want a lot, I'm just going to kind of get rid of some of this, some areas where I can't get the towel. It doesn't have to be completely like taken away because it collect a lot of grime and stuff between these parts of the letters. So maybe just see through it a little bit. But that looks pretty damn good, I think. Yeah, so it looks like a kind of bronze plaque that's collected some grime. We actually need to go back and add a little bit more between here because I took a little too much off I think. There, let that dry for a second. Okay, I'm going to come back on this piece. I think I got too much paint on there. I'll take some of it off. I don't want to obliterate the details by filling it in with too much paint. Take some off. I'll hit the sides too, because since this is kind of acting like a little bit of a wash too, staining this a little bit, which I like the look. Okay, I'm gonna hit this with the hair dryer.
same thing to this part, this plaque here. Basically, I'm doing like an enamel wash, but I'm using watercolors. <clears throat> Again, just got a towel with some water in it, kind of damp. Start wiping. good. <laughs> I love it when an experiment works out. It gets me excited. Plaque to me. Bringing all that, <coughs> bringing out all that river detail. That cityscape's looking really cool. Cover the whole thing with that watercolor. Kind of help stain it a little bit, which would have happened in, in its natural surroundings. Here, just get rid of a little bit. I don't want that completely filled in. Like that. This one's just about done with this step, I think. I don't want to take too much off. So I'm going to go back and dry brush some, um, some highlights on these two. Yeah. Hopefully you can see that looks pretty damn cool. Actually, I took a little too much off around the rivets here. I'm going to add a little bit more. Kind of get a little carried away. That's a great thing about this stuff. If you take too much off, you can put it back on and do it again. And just like that, it's dry and I can just go in here real quick. I'm just going to super lightly wipe it. I think I was putting too much pressure on before. So the smallest amount of water on here. There we go. Dang it. And there we go. Cool. All right. Then 
don't want to do is like have any obvious like swipe marks from the towel, so that's a little tricky to do that, but that's looking pretty good right there. I'm happy with that. Again, I think I took a little too much off. Run these rivets. Hit those again. Be a little lighter. I wipe it off. It's gonna be real light. I don't want to put in too much pressure on. Just want to hit the tops of the rivets to take off the watercolor. There we go. And now they stand out. It's cool, so that looks good. I'm going to go back to here where I took a little too much off between the letters. This again, I'm not putting a lot of pressure on. I did last time. That's looking pretty good. Good. All right. Now it's Acme. St Acme still drying. Actually, I put a lot on here. Actually, I didn't do the sides, so let's do that real quick. And then um, the last thing on the plaques is um, Mark wanted a little UV paint on the Ace Hardware sign, so I'm going to put um we're going to tag it with some UV paint that only shows up under UV light, and it'll say ha 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 like from the Joker. So that should be cool. A cool effect. I still have to go buy that. I can get that at Michael's or anything. I'll just hand paint it on there, kind of. Actually, I need to go back through and add some more and get paint down in all these little textures in here. Too much somewhere. Okay, let me uh, dry this down real quick. Oh, too much paint right there. Kind of hiding some of the detail. You can put too much paint. Right, start cleaning this one up. Hope you guys don't mind long videos. This is a long build series, but I really wanted to do some really good documentation of my first uh, prototype paint up. Again, just got a slightly damp towel here and just starting to wipe away. This color brown actually helps make this look, um, adds to the bronze look to it. It warms it up a little bit. Yeah, it looks like, looks like worn bronze. It looks like weathered bronze. It's been out of the elements. That's what we want. Yeah. This one will take a while. There's a lot of little crevices and stuff to get into.
action towel here. Another thing great about watercolors is that when you uh, need to wash your towels, just wash them by themselves and uh, all the watercolor will come out. I've got a crap load of the IKEA dish towels that I use for my rags. They're cheap. I just use them when we no longer use them in the kitchen. So 30 minutes of me doing this, but maybe you'll learn something. I learned something. And this is actually kind of a cool effect. Using my fingernails to kind of get down in these letters a little bit. I don't want to take it all off, but I want to. I don't want to cover up all that metal completely. So, kind of get in a corner and rubbing in there a little bit. getting there. The first two look really good and then I'm going to go after this. I'm not going to seal it. I'm just going to dry brush it right after this. I'm getting in that part of the E. Use the corner of the towel here, which is kind of, there we go, a little stiffer. Alright, we're getting there, slowly but surely. I think I'm going to do that after I dry brush this, so I may go do some rain streaks on this too. We'll see. 
That's looking pretty good, I think. Might use a Q-tip a little. Might use a little bit of a Q-tip too. Q-tips are good, but one thing I don't like is they leave a lot of fuzz behind. You don't have to take it all off. You can have different variations as far as how much you see through this kind of wash mix. Just gives it some gives it some tonal variations. But that's looking pretty good. I think I'm pretty happy with that. Okay, so I'm gonna dry that down real quick. Counterintuitive, but I'm gonna use a little old gold as a dry brush color. I'll just spend some time cleaning my brushes today. Alright, so dry brushing is pretty simple. Get your paint, get a paper towel or a towel, and get yourself a brush. Get just a kind of a small flat tip. So I got my, this is the Vallejo liquid gold. And I'm going to take most of this off on a paper towel. And then it's just a matter of going here and kind of flicking it over the surface. We'll see if this shows up on here. It may not be bright enough. Actually, I think I need a bigger brush. Yeah, this is actually doing exactly what I wanted to do. Actually, the brush I want is dirty. I'm going to pause and come back. Okay, see this works. I went and um, clean up this brush. And I put a little bit of that gold on here and just getting most of it off of, on a paper towel. And now we're just going to go in here and add some highlights. I'll probably do one more level because it's just, it's just showing up. just not a whole lot. Make sure to do a little bit of silver. I'm not sure if you can see that, but it's kind of adding some highlights on all the edges. Very subtle. The reason I didn't do bronze is because I want something brighter. see it. It's very, very subtle, but it's there. So the Vallejo Metal Gold, Old Gold is a much warmer tone. There is a, a just gold, which is a little bit brighter, which I may go back after this.
I didn't want to get something too silvery. So I want to stay within this um, color palette. There we go. Now we're starting to look like something. You can actually, actually, um, I did this on my Hellboy that I did earlier for a client. I was using continuing on, my battery died. I forgot what I was saying, but anyway. Um, oh, I was saying on the Hellboy base, you can actually kind of polish with these uh, paints. I put them on my brush and I actually kind of go in there and like, and I'll just rub kind of relatively hard. It's almost kind of like burnishing a little bit. So I think I'm happy with that. So if you look at the difference between, I don't know if it's showing up in camera. This has been this has been dry brushed. This is not. I'm going to hit this one. The cityscape, because bronze will be much brighter on the edges as it wears. There you go, you can kind of see it picking up on the cityscape there very nicely. And I may not even seal these because I like the tonality variation between the dullness of the, um, the watercolor and the brightness of the metal. So this, I'm not even going to seal these, I'm just going to leave them as is. Um, as long as you don't handle it too much, it's okay. You're not going to take the paint off. Camera there a little bit, but again, just hitting all the edges. Yeah, that's really helping things pop. It's dry brushing. Lots of layers, 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 layers. So once I'm done with this, I'll go back with the other brighter gold and I'll just kind of hit the corners and stuff, I think. But man, this is looking like a bronze plaque for sure. It's kind of funny. The, the bronze is kind of like the base coat and then um, just build up on top of that. So that looks pretty good. Let's do the ace. I'm really curious to see what um, the factory paint up compared to this one is. It'll be the first time that I've, I've seen a prototype paint in person before they went to the factory. So it'll be fun to see um, how well it translates um, in the final piece that you guys get. I've seen some pretty good factory paint jobs. Then I've seen them, some that aren't so good. But um, everything I've seen of Mark so far looks really good. I think my experiment with the watercolors was a success. 
This is looking good. I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go with a little bit of this just gold. And this is more of a white, a little brighter gold. First old gold is nice and warm. Man, there we go. Ooh. All stuck closed. Some paint in the threads. So it's a little bit brighter. And this should be the last step on these. Start with the Gotham City one. And again, I'm just going to kind of hit the corners. I don't want a whole lot of this color. So I'm just going to kind of come from the top down and hit it. good. I hope Mark likes it. <clears throat> I think it looks pretty freaking awesome. I would be happy with that on my kit. That look right there. Again, this may not show up in camera. It's pretty subtle, but the person looks pretty damn pretty, pretty freaking amazing, I think. knocked out too much paint I get these knocked out and um, kind of wrap up really much most of Batman today or tonight as of now we're not doing anything as a family today so I got all day to work um, all that really left is left of the base Send a picture of these to Mark and see what he thinks. Uh, but I think they look pretty damn good. Uh, so the next part of the video will be let's see. I'm waiting for the the top coat on the belt to dry before I unmask it. Once once I take that off, then the Batman suit is ready for the weathering process, dry brushing and stuff like that. So I may do that next because I need to have him on the base when I do it. Um, and then. 
I'm playing with maybe adding a dry brushing a few more highlights on the blue. I don't know. I really like it. Um, I don't know. I don't want to get it too too contrasty. I want it kind of a little more subtle. But the base itself is basically stone. So actually, I may do the base next. I don't know. I got to think about it. So I'm going to pause and come back. All right, moving on. We're going to work on the base now. Um, since I've got stuff kind of drying, I'm in a good holding pattern on Batman himself. So basically, Mark wants a gray back, a gray stone um, uh, base. So, but we're going to add a few other colors rather than just black and white. And there's also some vine detail here that I'll get hand painted later. But for right now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to, I'm actually at a good starting point. It's already been primed with the Stylo Res Gray Primer. So I'm going to use that as my base for the most part. And I have a ton of colors out here. I've got um, some medium African flesh. I've got some toffee brown. I've got some transparent green black. I've got some sepia. Transparent cocoa brown. Transparent burnt sienna. Some, tram some yellow ochre. And also some transparent poison yellow. Um, and the reason for so many colors is because even though this is going to be, look kind of like a gray stone base in the end. We're not just going to paint one color. We're going to paint a, a variety of colors on top of this in varying just kind of random patterns. And we'll get the gray look through some dry brushing and weathering. So, <clears throat> a lot of colors for a gray base. <laughs> so, I've got my, I got this piece of cardboard I put up when I'm painting paint on my workbench just so it doesn't go everywhere and this is acrylic so don't worry about um, them being caustic or anything. I also have some of Badger's Minotaur um, oil discharge which is like a dark color. So there's no really rhyme or reason to what I'm going to do or why for now. I'm just going to start going in there with some of these colors and randomly adding some. So I'm going to start with some sepia and I'm just going to work a few drops at a time. And basically, I'm just going to kind of, kind of go in here and randomly kind of mist it on. I'm not trying to cover anything. Just trying to get some different tones in there. And again, just a few drops at a time. No reason to fill up your airbrush. Probably we'll do a uh, slightly different technique on the back here since it's not brick. It's kind of like what, you know, sometimes I'll stucco over brick or... I'm still going to kind of do this random color application. And also the eagle head will be gray too, but I'm going to do that a little bit separate uh, because um, it's a it would be a different type of stone, it wouldn't be the same. So, But I'm still going to do kind of the same thing. So I want to stand up just a little bit from the, from the background. Again, this is just the garagekits.us color sepia. Just kind of randomly putting it on here. I'm going to build up some colors. Okay, there's that. And I've got my cleaning pot. There's my cleaning pot. And a little alcohol here to just kind of help clean out between colors. One of my brushes that I have out here. If you haven't used Barrage Kiss at US Colors paints, I highly recommend them. Um, they're really my first introduction to acrylic paints, and um, they are truly spray, ready to spray out of the bottle. You don't have to add any flow improver or anything like that. It, Jesse does make a reducer you can put with it or a thinner. 
Uh, I've never used it. I have some. I've never used it. I really haven't found the need to. Can get a some uh, alcohol and paper towel here so I can kind of wipe my fingers off as I go too. Alright, so now I'm going to pick, um, so that was sepia. Fresh kiss that goes sepia. Uh, let's go in there with some transparent se uh, burnt sienna. So first one was sepia, number 209. This is the transparent burnt sienna, number 461. Again, even though this is going to be gray, we're going to lay down some some warmer tones first. I just don't want to go like lay down black and start dry brushing. That'd be really boring. And it wouldn't look very natural. Now this is transparent, so this isn't going to show up as much. And this you have to put on really, really light because this will pull super fast on you. I put a little more warm air brushing. A few drops. See that in camera is kind of just again shifting the color a little bit, and uh, I'm going with some transparent poison yellow, number 424. This is kind of the same steps I did on my Thor base, and it turned out really, really good. Um, it looks like really natural gray stone, but there are, are probably 20 or 30 different tones on it. Eventually, kind of do some more pinpoint type applications, but not yet. So 
let's do um I already did burn Sienna, Sepia. I'm going to go in with some, uh, actually some toffee brown. This is kind of a light, almost like a light leather brown. Toffee brown number 198. This I'm going to kind of concentrate a little bit more on the center of these stones. Again, this is just that they're going to be a gray tone when I'm done. That time I get done doing all the washes and everything. Now we've got two different types of brick here, it looks like. Just kind of hit the center of these. Get a real loose and be more precise. Everything about these paints is you can work pretty fast. Colors when I guess they're doing taking this back to gray. It's not just gray. That'd be boring. There's even some spots where I can see to the primer, but I'm not going to even worry about it because, again, just that's a little natural kind of tonal variation to it. Right, so that's looking pretty good. Now we're getting some dimension to this. I'm going to clean out my brush from this color. Jesse makes a uh, brush cleaner, but I can't get it so it doesn't work. I have a hard time getting Jesse's paints out of my airbrushes. I've tried to just paint this clean or straight, concentrate. Uh, I don't know. They're either really good or I'm doing something wrong. But alcohol seems to work the best for me. I'm cleaning out his paints. So 
So now I'm going to do is I'm going to go in with some uh, transparent cocoa brown, and I'm going to go kind of in between all the bricks and everything and start adding some shadows. So I'm going to fill my brush up pretty good. And put a lid on. Again, this is transparent, so I can't put it on real heavy to start with. I'll pull. So. I will do a wash too, but this is just kind of giving an initial shadow value. between all the bricks like the mortar line. Yeah, I'm getting pretty loose here. Oh, and let Charlotte out! The dog was always wanting, but he couldn't ever hear it, apparently. Got a little heavy there. Okay. There, but I kind of went, just went in between all the mortar. Just did a real quick kind of little shading effect around the brick. Then there's lots of layers building the tones up. Don't worry, this will be this will look like great stone when I'm done. <laughs> right now it doesn't look like great stone, it's like brown. It's kind of brown stone. But don't worry, I'll get there. Right. Same thing in here, I'm just gonna kind of come in and add some shadows. Things. Compressor kicking on, it's one of those brighter air tankless air uh, compressors. I actually kind of really like it. It's great for just by my desk when I'm doing this kind of stuff and I'm not in the spray booth. Okay. And a little 
recesses. Again, this being, I'm not being real precise here. So shadow around where the foot would be. Pretty good. Getting some shape in there. So pretty random. I'm not being real careful, really. I'm just to look natural. Not too precise. I'm gonna get this up under here pretty good. I think from what I hear I'm going to do is you know, I seal it and let that dry and do a wash and see how I'm looking before I do any because the dry brushing is what's going to bring out all the great highlights and everything. here, eagle head. I'm going to do quite, quite as much, so I want this to be slightly different. So I'm just going to use this kind of as a little, add some shadow. Again, I'm still using the transparent cocoa brown.
the said pretty good is where he meets the other the wall. Pretty nice shadow right there. first wash I think so I'm gonna pause and come back all right so I'm gonna seal everything with actually use the Krylon the Krylon matte spray I wanted a really dull surface um, so you can see what we got here now uh, what we're gonna do now is we're gonna start with our series of washes here's the towel I was using earlier for the watercolor you know because it's dirty because this is gonna get dirty so I'm, I'm gonna use three colors pretty much I've got um, dark gray a brown and actually have a dark green too so I'm going to work from light and work my way up and this is just to kind of again bring out the details and we're not worried about being gray stone yet we're still like underlying all the tones underneath so I've got this is Vallejo wash got a brush here and I'm just going to start putting it on not going to be real neat about it and all the crevices and everything and since this is a wash, it's thin. All the stuff I did earlier will, uh, should show through just slightly. You know, we're we're not going to cover anything up. We're just going to build up thin layers here. Let's see what I'm doing here. All the crevices and everything. And as we go, we can kind of wipe some of it off. surface again a little bit, just adding another tone. I'll do a little bit of this, I'll pause and then come back and show you what I'm done because again it's just the same process around the whole base. So I put it on, let it kind of flow in there. I can get in here where the magnets go or the plaques go just so it's kind of the same color. And just wipe it off as you go. Leave any other recesses. And it's just a dirty paper towel. It doesn't have to be super clean. But you can still see all that um, airbrushing I did through all this green. So I'll pause and come back when I finish the, doing this color. Okay, so I've decided what I'm going to do is I'm just going to use the green wash on the brick, which I've done. So I've gone around and gotten all the brick with the green wash. You can see the, see the difference between this and this. I'm going to use the brown wash on the top just because it's a different type of stone. I want to give it some. Um, I don't want it all looking the same, so I'm going to clean up my brush here a little bit. 
It's a water base. I can just use some water to kind of get some of that wash out of my brush. And I'm going to use the Vallejo dark brown, or yeah, it's a dark brown on the top and the other type of stone. But um, as it's dried down, you can really see all the really cool tone variations I got going on here. Even though I, it's stained green right now, um, this is just going to have a really nice depth to everything uh, once I'm done. So I just got the, the brown here. I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to put it on and wipe it off. And we're going to get all the gray tones from the dry brushing and stuff. It's on the green a little bit, I'm not too worried about it. Here. That is looking really good so far. It's going to be a nice base for lots of nice tone variations going on here. It's looking really natural. That's what we want. Probably could have done with watercolor too, but um, I'm really I've been using these Vallejo products lately, and I really like them. Um, if you want to save a couple bucks, you can probably do the same thing with watercolor. This is a water-based solution, so you know the ghost. You can do the same thing probably. But um, I'm, kind of, I'm one of those guys. I like things in a bottle ready to go <laughs> a lot of times. And just kind of covering the top here. and crannies. Let me go over this area again real quick. And we get a new paper towel. Just wipe it. So you can see there that all that wash has settled down into all those little details and everything. I'm going to pause and come back when I'm done with this brown stuff. Okay, so I've done the top with the brown, the, the brick with the green wash, this side with the brown. I went over the eagle head with the brown wash a little bit. Um, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go seal this where it is. And then um, I'll probably start doing some of the dry brushing and bringing up, start bringing in some of the, the, the gray tones that we want. Because for right, right now it's a pretty good base. I think for the look I'm going to go for, I'm going to get a little more on top here, right here, I feel like I can get a little deeper tone here. Seal this and uh, I'll come back to the next step. 
All right, so I went and sealed those again with the uh, Krylon matte spray. Let those dry for about 10, 15 minutes. Now we're gonna bring this back to gray, <laughs> to gray stone. So uh, what we're gonna do is I'm gonna do this again with my favorite, one of my favorite things, and that's the ghost watercolors. Um, I just got blacks and grays here. Uh, I need a little bit of water. We don't want this too runny. Um, so what I'm gonna first do is I'm gonna mix up a gray. Uh, put a little black here, my palette. I'm, I'm going to go through a lot of watercolor. And I'm going to put a little bit of the, some white in here. Let's see my palette right here. So I've got black and some white. Actually, this tube is dried up. Use some of the titanium white. And we're gonna work our way light to dark, or dark to light. Got a really nice uh, wide brush right here. Got just a teeny tiny bit of water. Actually, I should probably use a bigger palette uh, like this. I'm gonna take all this out of here and move it over here. Got more room to mix. I have, a, I have a bunch of these little palettes. I bought them at Michael's a while ago. You don't have these. You should get some. So I don't want. I don't want a dark. I don't want a real dark gray. Cause I don't want to lose all the um, base coating I've done. So we're gonna add some more white. This is really thick right now, but we're gonna. Thin it out just a little bit. Just a little bit of water. Okay, so. So, again, we're going to dry brush, so we're going to take most of this paint off my brush, so. Just gotta get my dirty towel right here. I'll take a lot of this off. And we're gonna start putting this on. And we're gonna work our way up to almost white. Real light. back and I do another wash after this. I don't know, we'll see how. This will be several steps. But by doing the brick, that kind of green tone and the other areas that brown tone, I can get away with dry brushing with the same color. But in the end, getting two different colors of stone or brickwork. Again, this is a watercolor for something I don't like. I can just get some water and wipe it off.
this will take a while to bring this up, so I'm going to pause and come back and show you when I'm done. Okay, so I'm done with that first tone of gray. Uh, you can see here the eagle head I got dry brushed, and that's starting to look good. Um, got this all dry brushed with that first tone of gray, so now I need to seal this again and move up a shade. So I'm going to go seal this and come back. All right, so that layer has dried for a while. I had some dinner, ran an errand. Now I'm going to mix up a slightly brighter gray using the same two colors, black and titanium white. Just need a little dab of water. Don't want much. Now we're just working our way up, increasing the values. Too dark again. That's more white. I, forget, I always forget that black goes a long way. Oops. Roll the way on me. Get some more white in there. I'm gonna run out of white, I think. In this project. Let's get a little bit some more. There. Again, we take a bunch of this off. Unfortunately, you waste a lot of paint doing this, but it's a good process. Let's see here the effects we're going to get. Just kind of doing the same thing. happening actually. All those layers we put down earlier are still showing through. They're just getting muted a little bit. I'm just going to keep doing this and I'll come back when I finish. Alright, so there's the second tone of gray and it's getting a little bit lighter. So I think the next step, I'm going to seal this again and I'll probably come back with, with almost a pure white and just kind of go over it again and see how we're looking. So I'm going to go seal it and come back later. Okay, so we're down to, now we're down to our third, our next level of 
gray kind of color and it's pretty light right now as you can see so again this has been sealed already and we're going to start brushing this on try brushing this on and this is going to be really pretty 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 bright at first but it'll dry down Now we're starting to look like something. So we got all those tones, we still have all those tones kind of showing through that I put on earlier. And then we're covering them up a little bit, but they're still there. I'm just kind of brush down in the down direction for this color because it's pretty bright. It's a nice highlight. See now that even though we had all those colors going on below it, now we get the illusion that this is a gray stone. We've successively come up brighter with different shades of gray. And it just gives us some interesting tones. It's just not black and white and you know. It actually has got some dimension to it. Just kind of working this around. Should be able to get this base wrapped up tonight. It'd be nice. Because after this, um, all I have to do is paint the vines. Uh, and the very last step is the UV paint, but that'll be the very, 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 very last step of the whole process of the whole kit. Need to go get some UV light. And I may come back and do some sponging on top of this. I may do that next. really really good this is, kind of, this is exactly what I had in my in my mind 
when I was thinking about how I wanted to attack this one, it marks a, a gray stone base. I just didn't want uh, just gray. I mean, I keep saying that this is boring. With some tonality, like so, like, like especially with this brick with these vines on it, you would kind of assume that maybe it had some moss or something growing on it somewhere. So this green wash that I put on kind of implies that. Like, like green moss between the, the bricks. This is looking really nice. So far, the only thing I have to have done that I need to redo <laughs> is because I didn't have clear directions. Was uh, on the the grappling gun Mark wanted a wooden handle, and I painted it metallic, but that's no big deal. Like it's hand painted. That would be done the same way I did like the Hellboy and um, what else did I do? Oh, the Punisher handles on the on his guns and stuff. Up here now. steps involved. <laughs> but I am going to go back and do some sponging. I think I think my gray is look, looking a little too uniform. I'm going to do the eagle head real quick too. him I think so I'm just kind of coming from the top down dries down quite a bit. So it's alright. Almost looks like pure white as I put it on, but it's not. It's a very light gray. I'm just going to add more water. pretty good there. I'm happy with that. Okay, what I'm going to do now is before I seal this, I'm going to get some sponges out. I like natural sponges. It's like the, the randomness of the shape. Because my gray is looking a little kind of um, even. So I'm going to do is I'm going to continue using the watercolors, but I'm just going to add to this a little bit, um, a little 
a yellow ochre. Not much. It's a little bit. Just like that. So it's still gray. It's just a warmer gray. Just like that. And I'm gonna dab my sponge into it. So I made a little yellow ochre into the gray there. And I got my natural sponge here. Dab it in there. And I'm gonna come in here and do this a little bit. Kind of break this up a little bit. I don't want too far there. Ah. Oh, poo -poo. Let's see if I can get some of that off. A little too far on that brick. That's alright. here in a second and do some shading on top of this As this dries down, it actually gives it a really nice uh, tone. Okay, it's been pretty good. So now what it needs, it needs some more shadows, is what this needs. It's a little flat. I think I think I like the tone overall. some uh, clear black green which I like as a uh, shading color out of this I'm not sure if I have enough so this is just uh, garage, garage kits uh, transparent and black green I'm not sure how much of this I have left I use it a lot for shading so I'm gonna put quite a bit of my airbrush and we're gonna go in here and add some shadows back in so the transparent so we're doing it pretty light and we won't lose any of the other stuff we've done because it's transparent you can still see it
some shadows here and there. Kind of going around all the mortar. Bring some more shapes. I'm not losing any of the work I did earlier. I'm just trying to get some more dimension in these guys. And this is doing a trick right here. I've had a good days of work on this. Um, I'm done and done today. I'll put in a good 10 hours on this. 10 to 12 hours. I'm going to kind of accentuate this area under here. Make it a little darker. shadow on the back underside of that yeah that's helping a lot I'm doing this right here Hopefully this video won't have a little corruption. My last video had a corruption. I had to go in there and look, look at it frame by frame to find it. <laughs> it was not wanting to upload. That took me a while. So I don't know if this is showing up in camera, but this is going in real light. It's just giving some shape to the brick. What's cool about this is you can see all the tones that I started with still, even though I've gone over this with several, several layers. All those are show, showing through with all those different steps. So it's got a real nice, you can kind of accentuate this shadow right here. From this uh, part of the base. It kind of brings that right here. I'm going to add shadow on the foot. And where his leg kind of comes over here. I'm going to give a kind of a false shadow. Like that. So Mark, I hope you like this. I <laughs> think this is a lot of work to get this feel like this. Um, and uh, if you watch the whole thing, you'll 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 see my explanation for doing the different tones and stuff. crack right here and then kind of bring that out a little bit. That's a 
panel liner here. We're going to accentuate that. Like that. A little soft. Bring it down. Now we're going to add some. Um, I want to see where this plaque lands. I'm going to kind of put a shadow where that plaque would be. But I don't want the plaque on when I do it. I'm just kind of creating the, the sense of a sign being here. And then uh, the last step on this will be um, I'm gonna I'll, I'll seal it, but Mark asked for a slightly damp look on top. So once that's dry, I'll I'll, um, I'll spray the top with a with a satin. So this looks kind of weird right now. What I'm doing. Once I put the sign on there, it makes sense. So, yeah, there we go. That just gives a sense of, a, of something there. And now we're gonna work on up under here. Once I get this, I'm going to like it. I'll seal it again. And then I'm going to do the vines. Let me centroid this line a little bit right here. So that's where the eagle head goes. So there'll be a shadow there. Hopefully this gives a sense of a, an old building in Gotham. I think it kind of does. I'm real happy with the way it looks. Go to the vines real quick and add a shadow for them. I'm gonna hand paint these. Um, probably brown and work my way up to a light, lighter brown with maybe a little bit of green in it. There's only vines on this side, so that shouldn't take too long. Okay, so I think I like this. Uh, I'm gonna put a little shadow right here, up here on the top where his foot goes. Again, it looks weird without him standing on there, but once he's on there, it'll make sense. Here and here, 
hit some of these crevices. Oh, there's some damage. And again, just to give it some more contrast. I like contrast. I like lots of contrast. Makes things pop. Just like that. Right here. Crack it in. You don't even see this because one of the Batmans on there, this kit covers it all, but I know it's done. It makes me happy. Okay. I think. Do I dare say that? That is done. Um, I like it. I like it a lot, actually. Okay, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back. I'm also going to do this on the eagle head with the the black green. Let's see what I'm doing. Push that back. Let's see if they just kind of come in here and. Some shadows. Let's see what it looks socket pretty good. And then just kind of letting that fade up. Sorry. A lot of times I don't know if I'm in camera. My cell phone's dead right now so I can't see the uh, monitor what I'm doing. Putting this on pretty soft, letting it kind of just kind of go naturally, not getting in real tight. I don't want like a super hard line. On the soft transition between this and the other tones. There's a crack here I just noticed. Move that in. Looks that pretty good. Oh, by the way, this is sculpted by Avi. I don't think I mentioned that before. I think uh, Avi sculpted it. Pretty much everything marked I think Avi's from the sculptor. Oh, not a paint. Nothing's happening. There's no paint in the airbrush. That's why. This edge pretty good here. I'm gonna come out from this angle. This is whoops. Ah, poop. Got a little touch up there now. Because I was stupid it and bumped the um face. <laughs> yeah, stupid thing. Let's see if I can touch it up real quick. I need, yeah, you know, 
crap happens every once in a while. Mm, that just happened. There we go. Sorry, I'm off camera. I'm just touching up a little boo boo I did. Yeah, done. <laughs> All right, so that's looking good. I'm happy with that. Let me put him on the base. That looks pretty good. And I'm gonna go in here and just add a shadow around it. Go ahead. Okay. So now I'm gonna go seal this and let that dry for a little bit, and we'll do the vines. So I'll be back when I'm done with that. Okay. So that's been sealed. Um, it looks really, really good. Now I'm gonna go in and I'm gonna paint these vines, and I'm sticking with my watercolors. So. Um, yeah, hopefully you guys can see what I'm doing. Not the best light or anything. <laughs> I'm gonna get like a little head mount for my web for my little camera here, I think. So what I'm gonna do with these is I'm gonna start with um, brown and work, work my way uh, dark to light again. So um, at least all like like dead vines. So let me find a brown, a dark brown, burnt sienna maybe, maybe burnt sienna. Maybe a little too red. Let's see. I may have to make some black with it to get the, the tone I want. Let's see. Actually, what I may do, I think I'll start with black and work my way up. A little bit of black watercolor here in my palette. I can't see it, but it's there. A little bit of water. And we're going to go and start painting these. I got a lining brush like I was using before. And my watercolor is it's a little soupy, which is fine. I don't want it super thick. And we're just going to kind of come in here and Start kind of going over these a little bit. Actually, what I probably should do, if it's too wet, um, like it is kind of right now, there's um, the watercolor won't stick because of the surface tension. It's really not. Okay. So let's go back to. I'm going to do some burnt sienna. Oops, too much. brush may not be the best for this. I'm going to switch brushes to shorter. Yeah, this will probably be easier to, to do what I need to do. I mean, they're tighter. Go. I'm just going 
going to pause and come back when I'm done with that. Okay, so I put the first coat of color down on the vines and I sealed it and it's looking kind of wacky right now. <laughs> it's going to change up. One second. So it's really brown and kind of ugly right now, of course, but this is just the first layer. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to den this down a little bit with some of this dark wash. It's uh, Vallejo. It says uh, for gray or dark vehicles, but it's actually kind of like, it's basically black. So I'm going to go in here and just do like a pin wash like I did um, on the uh, pouches of the belt. I'm going to put it on and then I'm going to wipe off the excess with the paper towel. So I'll do two things. It'll leave in the crevices and I'll stain them a little bit. And then uh, they'll get it ready for the next step, which will be some dry brushing. So again, just, just kind of going in there, putting this on there, just hitting the these little vines. I don't want to get it on the brick if I can avoid it. It gets on there a little bit. It's not that big of a deal, but um, I got the brick looking the way I want. So just go in there, put it on, take it off. Take it off. Come on. Take it off. This is kind of getting the initial look that I want. I don't want these like really, really loud. I want them pretty subtle. Okay. And this should go pretty quick here. first glimpse of what this guy's going to look like because um, I'm really in the home stretch. The only really thing left to paint, paint paint, is the wooden handle on the Gatling gun. Um, as far as Batman goes, I just got to kind of weather him up a little bit. And it's going to be pretty light. just want to warm like we want him to look like he's been beat up. So it's mainly dry brushing. see what it's doing there. It's just kind of deadening that brightness. Adding, getting in all nicks and crannies. And then when I dry brush this, it'll be um, it'll be almost a, a white, a very, very light gray. So what I want is the illusion of that this was living at one time and it's kind of died and dried out a little bit. filled up so uh, I had to download it so um, I went ahead and finished putting on the black wash so now those have been toned down quite a bit what I'm gonna do now is I'm actually gonna go in and I'm gonna um, I'm gonna dry brush um, some light some almost like I'm gonna put, do white and some of uh, that same titanium uh, not titanium same as uh, burnt umber so I got a little bit here in my palette here mix it up so 
just got off here, off, off the camera here, off camera. I'm going to add another color to this. I'm going to add a little green to it. Just a tad. I'm getting kind of like a mossy, viney look. So I kind of got this color going on right here, and we're gonna just dry brush that one on top and see what it looks like. See so it gives us kind of the effect I want. I thought I was going to do kind of like a dead gray vine, but then it would just kind of blend in with the base. So I figured I'd probably add a little color to it. Until it would pop out a little bit. And I'm just taking the flat part of the brush and just kind of scraping it over them. Just hitting the high spots. Some random areas that have to be all over the the vines. I'll just wipe it off with some water when I'm done. I see I'm just using the flat part of the brush here. seal for the next step. I'm mean, just going to go in there and keep just doing this. Turn down some of this on this little right. This spot right here got like actually <laughs> kind of like Christmas tree green. Too much green and not enough the other color. So, now what I'm going to do is I want another little tone in there. Again, I don't want these like really loud, but then I don't want them to blend in to the bass either. 
I'm getting a little separation right now. I may go with the airbrush. And with some of that transparent black green, go around the edges. Give a little more separation. It's a little, little brighter tone. Hitting the real high spots. back I've got some I think this is watercolor here can we activate it yeah and I'm gonna get a little more of the white when it go get low on white taking some of the, um, the very last uh, gray that I used on the stone just had a little green in it and I'm getting a really bright tone again just using the flat part of the brush Dirty water over here. I don't care. That's dirty. This adds another little tone to it. It's too white right there. Knock that down a little bit. There we go. Just doesn't take a lot. Just a little bit here and there. Now ah, we're getting somewhere. Again, I'm not gonna do it all over. I'm just gonna do some. Kind of spots here and there. Now the vine's got some character to them. Kind of greenish, woody color. bright tone and with this I won't need to do that uh, clear black green because it's giving enough contrast to the rest of it that it really kind of pops off the base so I need to do I need just a really bright highlight <clears throat> so it wasn't there Pretty happy with the way those look. It's gonna dry down a little bit. Got a little that vine color on the brick. Let's go in there with some. I got some water on my brush here. I'm just taking it off. Now what I'm gonna do is while I'm here, then I'm gonna go in with some black. I'm gonna use the watercolors. You can use I use watercolors as a uh, I'll wash sometimes too. Um, what I did earlier on the the, the brass plaques. What we're going to do here is I'm going to make a really kind of thin solution. I'm just using straight black. Got here on my palette. And we use it as a pin wash. 
it's kind of along the edges of, of the vines. So you can kind of draw it in like this and kind of let it flow. So that's pretty watery right now. pigment to it. If it's too watery, um, it just beads. The great thing about watercolors is they're super easy to clean up. Just do all these pallets in a tub of water and let it sit overnight and it all comes off. It's too thick. There we go. Put a little too much in there, so I just went back and took it off. I'm just kind of go around the edges here to help give some more separation. Too much on you can just go wipe your brush off and go soak it up. Not too much on there. I actually used this kind of technique when I was doing the Hellboy. I want to get a little more weathered look on some of the areas. I just use really watery black watercolor. Use it as a kind of a wash. I'll go back and do a little more of this bright dry brushing because I kind of muted some of, of it doing this because I didn't seal it before I did the step. That's okay. It's no big deal. When you first put this on, it looks really, really black, but as it, it's really watery, so as it dries, it turns more into like a dark gray, which is what I want. It's going to be a very long work in progress video, a couple hours long. So, it's a full day's worth of work. Started this about 10 o'clock this morning. It's now hmm, coming up on 11. <laughs> of course, I took a few breaks here and there, but it's been a full day. I got a lot done. Pretty much have the base knocked out, um, except for the UV paint. And um, I bought some uh, something from Krylon Call. Thick glaze because we want to do we want to make the top of the base look wet or damp. So I'm gonna spray a test on a spoon and see how it looks. And we're gonna uh, try to make it look like it had rained or something. I'm not gonna put all over the base, just the top. So 
think you get the idea here. So I'm going to pause and I'll come back later. Okay, so I think the vines look pretty good. They're not super loud and they're not super muted. I think it's a good balance between it kind of looking kind of dead and like it was alive one time. It just got kind of like highlights kind of, you know, kind of scattered around them and that little black kind of wash it around the outline helped give it a little more separation. Got a little extra um, black here and there that I don't like. So now uh, basically I just need to seal this and um, make sure I take a little more of this really watery black and kind of do this number. Yeah, I don't like that. I'm going to take that off. So anyway, I thought I was going to do that, but I don't like it. Uh, I go seal this and other than, um, then the base is almost done. So I'm going to call this work in progress done. <laughs> Hopefully you guys uh, take the time to watch it. And I'm going to call tonight done. It's been a long day. I'm in a really good spot. Um, today is Saturday the 10th or the 9th. Today's the 9th. And my goal, we'll see if it happens, is to have this wrapped up by Monday evening. Uh, which means I'll have it had, had it done in two weeks. Um, once it's done, I want to let the paint cure for several days. Uh, make sure it's all dry and everything before I ship it back to Mark for his. Uh, I'm assuming I'm, a ship, I'm shipping this back to Mark. He's going to look at it and then he'll ship it to the factory. Um, don't know yet. We haven't gotten that far, but I think the base looks really good. Um, uh, he wanted gray. I showed him a picture earlier and he loved it. So it basically looks like gray brick with moss on it. Um, you know, got kind of brownish tone going on up here, a little slightly greener tone going down here with the vine. Um, this looks really nice right here, kind of like, you know, just kind of like a dirty cityscape. Um, I really like this. I think it's perfect. And then, uh, let's throw the plaques on there. And then with the plaques, it looks really sharp. These really pop out against this very nicely. So, yeah. Um. I'm digging this. So I'm going to seal it. I'm going to do a test with that glaze spray and call it a night. Uh, thanks for hanging in there. Hope you guys watched this one. It's a long one. But uh, as always, this is Matt Mrozic. We'll catch you guys next time. Stay tuned for work in progress number 10, which will be um, tomorrow, which will be basically weathering Batman, uh, dry brushing some stuff on the suit. I'm not going to go crazy, just kind of lightly worn. Um, and hopefully that won't take too long, um, a, a couple hours maybe. And then we're just about there. So uh, thanks for watching. Catch you guys next time.